third rushing to, are you tired, Kyron Williams? Incredible performance. Are you tired, my friend? No, I'm just having fun. You know, this is <laughs> real life fun and, you know, it's just getting started. You know, I don't think there's time to be tired, you know. Um, there's always more work to be done, but, you know, this is just a, the, the amount of work that we put in, we're just, you know, reaping the benefits now. You are the star running back of the playoff bound Los Angeles Rams. You were a St. Louis Rams fan. We have that in common. Yep. I lived in St. Louis after college. I went to Mizzou. I worked for the Rams. You grew up loving Steven Jackson. I worked with Steven Jackson. There's so much to get into. I just want to say congratulations. It's not just not even football vibes. Like, just as a person, it's really inspiring what you've done, what you're able to do, and I know that you're just getting started. I do want to start on that third rushing touchdown that you just saw. Normally, I'd ask you to break down your incredible 28-yard run, but, you know, you were honestly the second most impressive Williams on this play because yeah. <laughs> let's look at the dip and rip, the dip and rip by your mom. Shout out Taryn, who we love. Uh, walk me through this. Yeah, um... So I initially, I'm going to go into the end zone. I, I step across the um, the goal line and I see my mom running down the stands. Like I seen her, I'm like, okay, bet. Listen, I'm gonna meet you right <laughs> the stands. So that was that was the whole plan was just to you know smoothly give the ball to my mom. But then somebody out of nowhere came and took the ball from my mom. And then like I seen it happen. I'm over there, yo, get off my mom. Like get the ball back to my mom. That's my mom's ball. <laughs> That's I was my mom. Screaming at him and whatnot. And I guess she heard me get like she heard me start getting mad. And so she took the ball, ripped it, and then looked at him like he was crazy. So. Um, he nah, was crazy. Just, who does yeah, that? That's the type of mom he is, for sure. Well, who acts like that? It's crazy, but we love the, the I mean, the dip and rip by Taryn. Shout out to her. And it's not the first time your mom's gotten the screen time. You're, do you have the most fun family of all time <laughs> in the NFL? Let's t first take a listen to your mom on this touchdown that you had, I believe, against New Orleans. Yep. Okay, everybody, Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. You got Grace, you got Kaylin. Everybody's just like vibing out. It's amazing. It is. It really is. Um, but that was just like, that was kind of normal for us, you know. Um, it's not normal that, you know, we're in the NFL now, but it's normal that she cheers like that. And she's been like that since I remember starting playing football. Like, it would be it would be not normal for her not to be that excited. You yeah, know, this is my favorite like, one. Like, <laughs> yeah. Do the, do the Williams. Yeah. Are she's you just ever, having fun. Are you ever like... I'm out here working. I'm out here like, and y'all are there having the best time of your lives. Are you ever jealous? No, not at all. Because <laughs> like, those, those emotions I see on their faces, you know, I, we feel, we all feel the same way. Like we know what it took to get to where we're at now. And so just seeing those pure emotions, my mom's face red as a tomato. Like that's like the best feeling ever. Because I know how excited she is, and I know how much like she knows how much this means to all of us. Oh my gosh, it's so easy to root for you, Kyron, I gotta say. Um, you, you scored three touchdowns in any week, that's amazing. Now in week 17, I know that you're hearing it from fantasy football people. <laughs> I know that you won people a lot of fantasy championships. I wanna give you a second to just, I want you to talk to those fantasy football owners, the ones that woke up at 2 a.m. early in the season and said, yeah, I'm gonna put my waiver claim in for Kyron Williams. What would you like yeah. to say to those who believed in you? No, I thank you guys. You know, you guys are the, the, the bottom line of the supporters. Like, you know, I know I'm always have you guys um, with me because um, when I got injured and you and everybody, you know, got rid of me, there were still there were the few them that, that stuck with me. Mm -hmm. You know, they're 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 the champions of their leagues now. So I appreciate you guys for you know like stick sticking with me. Um, it's my always my goal to go out there and you know give my all, give my best for my team and this organization. But just being able to you know outside make the uh, managers happy you know it's even better so <laughs> you are you you're in you're in the history books you really are you're yeah. in the history books of a guy coming off waivers getting it i know that you're not a one-hit wonder you've got work to do you got work to do in week 18 you got work to do in the playoffs for the rest of your career but let's just like revel in the season it's been for you you are second in the nfc and rushing behind cmc but you missed four games. Let's put the asterisks right there. Fifth round pick out of Notre Dame last year. Uh, you grew up in St. Louis. Shout out Kirkwood. So I got to yeah. I got to ask the classic St. Louis question. Where'd you go to high school? I went to Vianney, you <laughs> know, in, in the heart of Kirkwood. So I'm right there. Yeah, take that, Shamanad.
Yep. <laughs> you know some. You know something. Yeah. Oh, oh, Kyron, I dated a kid from Priory. It's a whole story. I know all about those uh, high schools. <laughs> oh, yeah, hey, high schools ain't no joke in St. Louis. They take them serious. <laughs> they really do. You were born during Marshall Falk's um, MVP season. You grew up a Rams fan. You love Steven Jackson. You met SJ39 when you were a kid. What's your favorite childhood memory of the Rams? Look at this. <laughs> yeah. Just being able to go to... Um, the Sunday games, you know, my best friend at the time, um, my, one of my Little League teammates, he had season tickets to the Rams games. Um, and his family, you know, blessed me um, just to be able to come with them every Sunday. Like, it was it was just a non-negotiable. Like, we were going to Rams game, and that's just something I look forward to, you know, because after the game, the seats were, you know, good enough to where they were the opponent's locker room. So after the game, it didn't matter who they played. It didn't matter to us. We just wanted gear. You know, we, we wanted gloves. We wanted anything that we could get, towels. Um, from from the um, players that were coming off the field. So just being able to, like, wait for those Sundays and, like, know that you're going to be in that stadium, the Edward Jones Dome, and, you know, you're going to get gear from the NFL players. It was something that I waited for every single week um, and it was excited for. Did you ever get anything good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite thing? Uh, so, <laughs> no, you can't really – I can't really tell if it's his or not, but um, Adrian Peterson threw up his little um, skull cap after one of the games that, you know, I was able to grab. And the one thing – I don't, oh, I was so mad. This is a, like one other thing I remember when. So I don't know why hap, why what happened, but the Rams were coming out in the other end zone, and Steven Jackson threw up his cleats, and the dude behind me was an older dude. Dude behind me snagged the cleats in front, Are in front of me. Are you kidding me? He tried yeah, pulling was, a Giants fan, Giants fan on literally, your mom. Literally, that's exactly what he did. What? Yes, exactly what he did. Yes, and I, I vividly remember that. I'm like, oh my god, I could have got his cleat, and I missed it. And now you can look back and say, I'm the purest. Blank, blank runner in the NFL right now. <laughs> you think like, I'll give my cleats to anybody? Yeah. That's unbelievable. Doesn't Adrian Peterson? I don't know if I control him. Can tell me. Doesn't Adrian Peterson has the record? Two hundred ninety-six yards. Two hundred ninety-six yards in a game. That's the record. Yeah. Yeah. Week seventeen record. Priest Holmes two fifty-nine. Jonathan Taylor two fifty-three. Do you think you got it in you? We talked to Debo. We were joking. You need you need three fifteen to tie. Three sixteen to pass him. Any <laughs> are any part of you in McVay's ear this week? Hey, I always got confidence in myself, you know, to get whatever I got to get done. Um, if it's 315 yards, you know, I guess I got to put in extra work this week to, you know, get that. But, you know, that's never my my objective or my goal going into these games. You know, it's just be, really just being the best for my teammates um, and just to be the best for myself that I can be going out there. And that's just being controlled, you know, a controlled kind of player and not trying to do too much because um, I kind of figured out early on in my career that if, I, you know, I try to do too much, don't, don't really many good things happen. So I just kind of. Hmm. Come, lay back and let the game come to me. Uh, you're right up there when you look at greatest seasons in Rams running back history. I know you're talking about Peterson's cap. By the way, I think you should take that to McVay's office, tell him that story, and say 296. <laughs> what do we need? Like 20 more yards? Let, let's beat this. I think he'd be down for come it, up, especially uh, up against Shanahan. But I did want to show you this. Um, the guys that you're up against, or like that you're joining their company, rather, and as a Rams fan, this is just so cool. You're in the conversation with legends as the next great running back in Rams history. Look at that. Yeah, that's crazy to me. You know, that's something that I like, like I said, I don't do this for that, but, you know, just be able to get recognized and be around in those guys and kind of the same talk with around those guys is something I, you know, I, this is my dream since a little kid. You know, this is something I've always wanted to do was play football and play at the highest level and to be able just to prove myself, you know, always just being able to just to know that I, I can't play this game and I can play at a very high level. So just, just being able to, you know, I guess show the world that, you know, being in the name and the company of those guys is, is a is a blessing. You know, I thank God every day, to, you know, that he put me in this position I am now. So I just got to, you know, keep on leading and keep on doing the things that I got to do to make sure that you know, I, I continue to play like this and continue to be the same guy every single day. Making your family proud, your sisters, your mom, Viani, uh, everybody out there, shout out to them. And, of course, your team with what you're doing. Yeah. This Rams team is sitting there at 3-6 and six in Week 9. You guys go off and win six of your next seven, your playoff round. What was the moment that you were like, we're t we turned this around? What would you point to as that moment? I would say after the bye week. You know, it was our mission coming in after the bye week to be able to just – be one and know after after every single week. And, you know, we came up short against the Ravens, but we, we talked about that being the last callus that we had to have, you know, to become to be able to have that season that we know that we can have, you know. And so being able to be, become 6-1 after the bye is that's huge. You know, it's a confidence booth, but it's also a testament to what we do each and every single week. Um, you know, that we're getting better as a team. We're gluing, we're gelling, and, you know, we're just playing – ball and having fun while doing it you know you see the smiles on these guys' faces when you know there's plays when there's plays made or when there's 
Um, when, you know, when there's a win, just you know, being able just to share these moments with these guys is you know the the biggest thing that I know I felt the difference from last year to this year mm -hmm. has been. Okay, one last quick one because our show's over in about a minute here. I wanna, we got to talk a little Puka. You and Puka yeah. have a lot in common. Yeah. I like your style. I like your energy. Both went in the fifth round. Both have a lot of fun out there. He had his longest play of the season but ended up just short of a touchdown. And then you come in and score the <laughs> touchdown. I know y'all are friends. Be honest. Was he pissed he didn't get the score? Yes. I mean, yeah, as a competitor, as a competitor, when you, you know you're in an open field like that, you always have the mentality to score. And, and I didn't even think about it that I took uh, Puka's touchdown until he, he said that. So <laughs> my fault, Puka. But I know next time, I know next time that you're gonna finish that, and I know next time, you know, that's your seven points. So hey, great play, and we're gonna be we're gonna be better for it. Is Puka rookie of the year? Oh yeah. What? <laughs> the things that he's doing right now is just you know you don't see that every year, especially from a rookie. And so and he's doing it on a consistent basis. You know, each each week. Um, He's doing, he's putting up those numbers. So, you know, shout out to the work that he's doing and the, and the player that he is. We need 316, McVeigh. We need 316. I mean, listen, I'm looking at, you faced him in week two, 100 total scrimmage yards and two touchdowns. I want to ask you about the Niners being a tough defense. Doesn't seem like it when it comes to Kyron Williams, uh, an absolute stud. Happy to meet you and good luck in the playoffs. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you, Kyron, for joining the show. Shout out to your mom. <laughs> shout out to everybody. And we will talk to you, hopefully, maybe as a Super Bowl champion. Who knows? This man ran his team.